Hello guys, welcome back. This is the ninth video in the Databricks free edition series. I saw in the comment section that some of you are having difficulty in reading the CSV file inside Databricks using Pandas. I have shown you how you can do that with this. Many of you are familiar with using Pandas in your day-to-day -day life and want to use the same functionality in Databricks. What I decided to do in this video is show you how you can do that. That's it. Nothing else. Let's directly jump into it. But if you haven't watched my previous videos in this particular series, I highly recommend you to watch the video so you know what kind of things are already being covered. Now let's jump into the Databricks free edition UI. This is the UI. Just before going into it, I want to show you that before I have already uploaded one Titanic dataset CSV. Right inside the workspace, inside the Titanic dataset, I have Titanic, but I is uploaded the CSV, but now it is converted to table. That's how it works if you just to choose the table, right? And I have shown you how you can read this, but I will also briefly show you how you can read this with a Spark and then convert that into pandas and use the pandas functionalities. And the next one is how you can read directly the CSV using the pandas. For that, let me go into the notebook I have created. Here is this read CSV with pandas. I have this link also here because in Databricks, there is a way how you can upload the data in the tables as a volume. We need to be uploading that into the volume, right? I'll provide the link in the description. Please go ahead and read the main uh, things. For example, what is catalog, schema, table, view, volume, and so on. That way, you, you get the idea of what sort of things are being covered in the Databricks. And if you happen to watch my Unity catalog video, I want you to read this or watch the video because you need to be knowing the Unity catalog object model, right? There will be a meta store catalog schema and inside the schema, there are tables, view, volumes, functions, etc. And I just showed you the table. That's the reason you cannot read directly with the panda. So we are going to use the volumes here. But before going into the volumes, I just want to show you how you can read with spark and then convert that into the pandas so here i have already shown this but you can just run this i will run by clicking here so it is reading spark read table and it is reading the table you can see here that this is the table if you are comfortable using spark and want to use the pandas functionality you can just do two pandas and now this will be your pandas data frame and you can start using the pandas functionality i think this will already solve the issue that you had because you don't want to work with the pyspark commands now you can see this is already a pandas data frame and you can use the methods or functions which pandas allow you to do you can do it in databricks most of the packages you use for data explorations are already installed for you you don't need to install. If you want to install, of course, you can do it by going into this arrow here and here you can add the dependencies and so on. But most of the packages are already being installed and you can just run this pip list and it will show you all the packages. There are many things and by arrow, I will show you where pandas is. So PA, here is pandas, right? And we see this is version 1.5. We can use the pandas functionality. This is just the one line to read it you can see now we have it you can do the same thing describe and it will show you the uh, pandas functionality but now let's cover what you were asking you want to just read with read csv right for that you cannot use directly from the table which we already have it here in the titanic data set here you can see this is titanic data schema inside it we just had one table we are going to create a volume and once we start creating the volumes there is two different things table and volumes here we will be starting to see tables and inside that we will have a table or whatever it is there and inside the volumes we will have whatever it is inside the volumes just remember this part here now let's go directly into the things here is the new icon this is how you upload now i'm showing you how to upload the data again but in the volumes so here you can add or upload data this is the same as for the tables also and there is two things here there is the files create or modify the table this is for the table upload files to the volume it says add files in any format to a non-tabular data set managed in unity catalog it says any format and CSV is one of those format. When you upload it, it will not be converted into table as before, so that you can use using the pandas. Let's try it. I'll go inside it. 
so here i can just browse from my local computer here is titanic csp i will use the same thing and now i need to provide the path i will go inside the workspace i will go inside the titanic dataset schema i will say create volume i will give the name here the same name maybe let's keep titanic okay just titanic it will work and i will say it's a managed volume you can give the command if you want so okay titanic titanic csv inside volume just a simple comment that you can also give i'll just create it and once it is created now you need to upload it right i will upload the data so it means that now we have inside the unity catalog inside the schema inside titanic data set there is a table and a volume so now if i go here i will just go inside the workspace inside titanic now you get the point with what i was mentioning you before before we just have the titanic now we have inside the table we have titanic if i go inside it you can see the sample data details permissions and column names if i go inside the volume and this is the volume meaning that in the volume it's treating as on structured data so you cannot see the see the columns and so on but you can see the files detail permissions kind of things which is normal for all the different file types you can copy the path and now let's go into the main file again so i will go into the read csv with pandas let's scroll down to the part where we want to read it using the volumes i'll go still down reading via volumes you can even do pandas if you want to see all the things what version of it the home page author and so on let me cancel this one and now whatever way you are using in your local computer or anywhere else you can import pandas as pd you can just give a variable name and here pd.read csv and this is the path where you need to provide the particular volume here i just give panda cs titanic csv before when i was testing but now what you can do is here you can see this is the volumes this is the space this is the titanic data set you can just say here okay display this let's see if this works so if i run this one so now it says here it's a directory right so here i'm going inside titanic data set it says it's a directory so this is kind of a directory so if i just go one step back before you can see here this is the volume workspace titanic data set titanic csv instead of this i have the titanic but you need to be also providing the csv it's different in a way how you provide it with the unity catalog in the unity catalog you have three label things catalog uh, schema and the table that's it but here we are uploading a volume and the actual name of that is titanic csp so this is how it works normally also so now if you provide this titanic csp i will just run this one and now we will be seeing the uh, pandas core frame data frame and you can use the uh, normal uh, pandas function or you can just run this one there you go you have now two ways at least to read the csv file one you can upload inside the table read at a table with the pi spark convert that into the pandas and use the pandas functionality next you can upload that into the volume and read directly with csv whatever way you prefer i hope this is clear and i really like how you guys are acting in the comment section of the video continue that so it helps me to create the video i was not planning to do it but then i saw that many of you are finding it difficult to achieve what you are trying to achieve in the databricks i hope it helps that's all thanks for watching and see you in the next video